So I have this old stick of SD RAM, which is uh, 133 megahertz, that um, was installed in a, an old eMachines PC um, that I am running a Debian server on. Um, this is a 64 megabytes stick, and I have SODIM module that's 512 megabytes SDRAM 133 megahertz. So what I want to do is I want to remove the chips from this stick and and then remove the chips from the SODIM module and solder them onto the S, uh, this uh, PC SDRAM stick to hopefully increase the memory. I should have read the manual to see if the motherboard will recognize a 512 megabytes um, stick and also I don't know if the resistors that are used on the on the SDRAM PC memory stick if they will allow to recognize the correct capacity of the replacement chips but you know I'm not gonna lose much these are old memory chips so um, it's worth a try it's uh, it's kinda curious and if I go from 64 megabytes to 512 megabytes that would be quite desirable because that um, Linux Debian PC server is uh, pretty starved on memory and that's causing me uh, some problems so let's uh, go ahead and start removing the the memory chips from the PC SDRAM memory stick so the process is pretty simple I'm just going to use um, a heat gun to heat up the chips and remove them from the from the stick so let's uh, go ahead and try I'm gonna need um, I am going to need a pin set I can't find the one that I wanted to use but let's try let's try this one so we're heating up the chip it can take a minute or two because uh, a lot of the times the solder that's used on the PCBs is lead free which means that it has higher melting temperature so it takes a little longer to melt the solder to remove the chips. And here we go. Whoops! I took out some sort of uh, controller with it so I'll have to uh, solder it back on. But this is the process and so uh, let's uh, I'm gonna pause for a minute and just go ahead and remove the rest of the chips. So the memory chips are removed you can see the the PCB is empty I've put the uh, capacitor that I accidentally um, removed by using um, tweezers that that weren't as good for it I found the tweezers that that I like to use here are the old chips I removed them put them in a baggie and then I'll have to label them um, so that um, I know what kind of chips they are in case uh, in case they'll be useful in some other project and here's the eight chips from the 512 megabyte SODIM module so now the process of putting them onto this PCB is the reverse of the removal so put the chips um, onto the PCB line up the uh, key on the chips correctly and uh, line up the pins correctly with the pads 
and then use the heat gun to solder them back on. Uh, technically somebody will probably say that I should should have used solder wick to uh, clean up the pads and then apply uh, flux and apply new solder uh, to the pads but uh, I'm a little lazy I guess so I'm just going to try to um, place the chips onto the PCB board just like that uh, because when you remove the solder then you need to apply the right amount of it and um, what was happening to me a lot of the times in the past is that the pins of the chips would get shorted with solder if I had too much solder on there so um, you know there's just the right amount of solder there right now that's why I don't want to go through the process of cleaning the the pads uh, from the old solder there and applying new one because it's kind of a uh, tricky process to apply just the right amount of solder to uh, to do it so I'm gonna pause once again and uh, go ahead and uh, solder these chips onto the PCB so I'll be right back here is the first um, larger capacity memory chip SD RAM 133 megahertz um, attached and what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow up with a soldering iron and go over the pins to make sure that they adhered uh, properly. The tricky part about soldering the chips back on is that the solder pads have solder on them that forms bumps and so when you try to line up the chip before you use the heat gun um, it doesn't really want to go onto the bumps it wants to go in between them so um, the process is a little bit more tedious than the removal of the chips uh, which is easier you just heat it up and take it off putting them back on requires a little more patience to line up the chips correctly and uh, you know solder them up with the heat gun and then follow up with the soldering iron to go over the uh, the pins to make sure that uh, they soldered on and established an electrical connection so I'm gonna go ahead and solder on the rest of the chips and I will pause for a minute and then I'll be back here's an intermediate shot of four replacement chips soldered on and uh, the last one was a little trickier to line up because of the bumps but also once again the reminder is that observe the orientation of the chips you see this uh, dot let me try to see if I can you see this dot right there that's the orientation that's pin number one and so you want to make sure that all of the chips are oriented with the dot just the way they are supposed to be oriented and after you uh, solder each chip uh, give the PCB a little time to cool down because if you overheat the PCB it can delaminate and um, you can also burn out some pads the passive components the resistors and the capacitors that are on there they're pretty heat resistant but um, they can also be burnt out if you apply too much heat and um, I'm not sure if my heat gun is uh, correct temperature if it's uh, too much because it seems like it was easier to remove the memory chips and solder the chips back on so I wonder if my temperature is uh, a little too much but um, like I said, I don't have much to lose. Um, I'm gonna proceed with uh, with the setup I have and solder on the 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 remaining four chips. So once again, I'm gonna pause and I'll be right back. Here's the final product. All eight larger capacity chips are onto the PCB. I observed the. Uh, the key on all of them dot 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 
dot. And hopefully this uh, smaller chip that I accidentally uh, knocked off, hopefully I got it back on with the right orientation. And uh, one thing I forgot to do, and that's an advice to all of you, is before you start removing any components or um, yeah removing any components take pictures so that if you forget what the orientation is supposed to be or where the components are and what they are and so forth take pictures that's what I forgot to do um, so I think that um, goes back to patience there's a lot of patience like I said you gotta let the PCB to cool down because ultimately soldering things or removing things with a heat gun uh, somebody will argue and say that that's dangerous because it can lead to the PCB getting warped because it's being heated from only one side it's not heated from underneath and uh, by the way this memory uh, stick is convenient in a sense that it doesn't have any chips on the other side you see there are pads on the other side so there's a potential that I could even increase the the memory size of this uh, stick even further but I don't know what passive components I would need to add um, and ultimately the motherboard will probably not recognize and uh, you know this stick is probably also not intended to be more than let's say 256 megabytes of memory and this is 512 so I might be already um, over the limit because this little chip as well as the resistors and capacitors that are soldered on they kind of indicate to the motherboard to, to a different device what the capacity is uh, basically they have to do something with the addressability of the chips and by the way when you are trying to increase the memory the SD RAM chips I, I'm not gonna speak about DDR2, DDR3, DDR4 because I don't know but the SD RAM chips the older chips the 133 megahertz 166 megahertz they are arranged in banks so these chips for example they have four banks the previous chips also had four banks or at least so I think I didn't really look up the data sheets and then they have a um, what I think is the memory bus so let's say 16 bits and then each uh, each cell would have either one mega megabit word or two megabit words or four megabit words but I think as long as the banks and the memory um, bus width are identical you can increase the memory and you would also ask why am I messing around with you know with this old technology with these old chips well first of all it gives me a practice to perfect my soldering skills and second of all the um, the devices that are lower powered let me try to get this router here so like for example this little router this happens to be a TP-Link router uh, just plugs into the wall and you have one USB and two um, um, Cat5 uh, plugs so inside this router the memory is most likely SD RAM memory the older kind of memory 123 megahertz 166 megahertz because this device is either 16 megabytes or 32 megabytes in 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 memory size um, and the the processor chips the SOC system on a chip that's usually used in these devices they're also not very fast they're 266 megahertz or 400 megahertz tops so they um, they're designed to communicate with slower memory they don't use DDR2, DDR3, DDR4 um, you usually find that kind of memory in tablets
which have more powerful chips you know they might be dual core or quad core chips in modern Android cell phones and tablets and those use faster speed memory but um, devices like like a router for example they um, use slower and smaller memory and slower um, SOC chip system on a chip set, uh, basically the the processors so you know save your old chips you never know if you might have a project where you would be increasing the size of an older device like that but that's it I'm gonna try to put this stick in the PC and see if the motherboard recognizes it so let's keep our fingers crossed that it does and that the this little project is a success okay maybe I'll talk to you in a minute